Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Wetton Science Revision. In this video we're going to look at how to explain how elements react and how they do ionic bonding. So this is a popular question in the exams. I've seen it as a four mark question, a five mark question and a six mark question. So for the sake of this video I'm just going to assume that we're talking about six mark questions to make sure we go into enough detail. The first one we're going to start with is sodium and chlorine. So describe how sodium and chlorine react to form sodium chloride. Now sodium is in group one. So it has one electron in its outer shell and it wants to lose that electron. Chlorine is in group 7, so it has seven electrons in its outer shell and it wants to gain one electron. So where sodium wants to lose an electron, chlorine wants to gain one. So that electron from sodium ends up being transferred over to the chlorine atom. We then get two ions being formed. So we get our sodium ion, which has now lost that electron, so it's become positive. And then we get our chloride ion, which has gained an extra electron, so it's become negative. This forms the compound sodium chloride, which is NaCl. That's its formula. So in terms of what would come up on the mark scheme, you might see sodium loses one electron. Another mark might be that it forms a positive ion. If you can name the ion, in this case Na+, even better. Chlorine, on the other hand, doesn't gain an, uh, lose an electron. It gains an electron in order to get a full outer shell. So it becomes, because it's gained an extra negative electron, it forms a negative ion, in this case a Cl- ion. Now because the sodium ion is positive and the chloride ion is negative, there'll be an attraction between them and we call this an electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic attractions are when there are positive and negative involved. And this attraction between positive and negative ions is called an ionic bond. That's what an ionic bond is. Now we're going to have a think about magnesium oxide. So we've got magnesium and oxygen. This one's slightly different because magnesium isn't in group 1, it's in group 2. So it has two electrons in its outer shell, which it wants to lose, which we can see here. It wants to lose those electrons. And then oxygen is in group 6, so it has six electrons in its outer shell, and it would like to gain two more. So those electrons from magnesium are going to be lost. Magnesium is going to want to lose them and they're going to end up being transferred to the oxygen atom. So your first marking point will be that magnesium loses not one, two electrons. You need to state that it's two. So the ions that we form this time, because magnesium's lost two electrons, we will form a two plus ion instead of just a one plus ion, Mg2 plus. And then the oxygen atom will form a negative ion as before, but because it's gaining two electrons instead of one, it's going to form an O2 minus ion, an oxide ion. If you call it an oxygen ion, you'll very often lose marks for that because it's not called oxygen ion, it's called an oxide ion, O2 minus. Because the magnesium ion is positive and the oxi oxide ion is negative, there's going to be an electrostatic attraction between them. That is your ion bond and it holds them together. Now we're still looking at magnesium for the next one, but instead of oxygen, we're going to think about chlorine. We'll go back to chlorine now. So magnesium is in group two. Still, same as before, has two electrons in its outer shell, wants to lose those electrons. Whereas chlorine is in group seven, so it wants to gain an extra electron. The problem with this is magnesium has two electrons to lose, but chlorine has only got room for one. So we actually need two chlorine atoms this time instead of just one. So one of magnesium's electrons will go to the first chlorine atom and then the second electron will go to the second chlorine atom. So the ions we form are Mg2 plus and then we form two Cl minus ions. They're both going to form negative ions. We form magnesium chloride and GCl2. So your marking points for this will be that magnesium is going to lose two electrons and form Mg2 plus or form a positive ion that two chlorine atoms are each going to gain one electron and form negative Cl- ions and then there's going to be a strong electrostatic attraction between the positive and the negative ions. That is your ionic bond. Now we're going to do one on a similar theme to that. So we're going to look at potassium and oxygen. So just to get you started on this, I want you to have a go at this one. We'll have a look at a potassium atom, which is in group one. So it has one electron in its outer shell. And then we'll have a look at an oxygen atom. Again, it's in group six, so it needs to gain two. Pause the video and see if you can work out what's going to happen. 
Now, because oxygen needs to gain two electrons, but potassium only has one in its outer shell to give, we're going to need two potassium atoms. So each potassium atom loses one electron, and an oxygen atom gains two electrons. So the ions we form will be two lots of positive potassium ion, K+, and one negative oxide ion, O2-. We're going to form the compound potassium oxide, K2O. So our marking points for this question will be, similar to before, two potassium atoms each lose one electron and each one forms a positive ion. Our oxygen atom gains two electrons and forms a negative ion. And then there will be a, an electrostatic attraction between the positive and the negative ions. That is your ionic bond. So it's pretty similar for every question you get asked on this topic. Thank you for watching guys, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you want me to cover in the next videos and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!